What's up guys? Hey, Jared Beckstrand here, doctor of physical therapy, toneandtighten.com. Grab your dumbbells, grab your interval timer, get those shoulders ready, and let's go to work. When most people think of shoulder training, their focus is right out here on this deltoid muscle. Now that shoulder cap or that deltoid has three different parts to it. You've got an anterior delt or a front delt, which is responsible for shoulder flexion and is most active in overhead pressing activities. You've got the middle delt or the lateral delt, which is most responsible for this shoulder abduction motion. It's primarily active with lateral raises, either with a cable or with a dumbbell. And finally, you've got that posterior head or the rear delt, which is most active in shoulder extension and horizontal abduction activities. Now, any good shoulder day is going to consist of exercises that take that shoulder through all of those motions. However, any great shoulder day is going to recognize that there's one more key component, and that is the rotator cuff. If you spend all of your time working on these big, powerful movers of the shoulder and neglect that stabilizer group, that rotator cuff, you're going to set yourself up for pain and injury. Therefore, whenever I design any shoulder workout program, we definitely want to work the three heads of the delt, but we have to include some rotator cuff strength in it and that is what you're going to get with this workout today. This is going to be a 25 minute shoulder workout that you can do at home with just a pair of dumbbells. We're going to be going through five of my favorite exercises that are going to target each one of those areas that I mentioned in the intro. We're going to be doing them in 30-30 intervals, 30 seconds of work followed by 30 seconds of rest and then we're going to repeat that four times. Now, I had a heavier set of dumbbells and a lighter set of dumbbells for each of these exercises. Makes it a little more effective, but certainly not necessary. Finally, you get a 30 second rest between each of the exercises as a time to simply catch your breath and set up for that next exercise. Best part about this is I'm gonna run you through the whole thing. I've got your interval taken care of. I've got the timing taken care of. I'll run you through each of the exercises. All you've gotta do is grab your dumbbells and let's go to work. All right, you guys, 22 minutes, here we go. We're gonna hit them hard, we're gonna hit them fast. Killer workout, can't wait for you guys to do this one with me. I did warm up prior to this workout, but I did not include that in the exercise video. I just spent like five minutes on my elliptical trainer. And so make sure you warm up prior to the workout. We want the muscles ready, we wanna prime that pump, we want the blood flowing, we want the muscles warm, and let's get down into it. Timer goes up. We're gonna start with some alternating dumbbell clean and press. And so this is my heavier dumbbell, we're starting all all the way down at the ground and then we're going to lift it all the way up overhead so kind of two parts to the movement from the ground we're going to jerk up to the shoulder from the shoulder we're going from the shoulder we're then going to press up and overhead so it looks just like that be sure that you're hinging at your hips be sure that you're keeping your back straight as you're pulling that dumbbell up to shoulder level keep your core tight and engaged as you press that dumbbell up and over your head nice job you guys so there's your first 30 seconds now for my low intervals i like to try to keep my heart rate a little bit higher while i'm doing these hit interval training workouts and so that being said i'm not going to just stand around and rest during the low interval 30 seconds i'm actually going to be doing a couple of different moves that I'll walk you guys through here in the video. First one's going to be a boxer shuffle, just kind of bouncing side to side for your 30 second low interval. And then let's get back into the second high interval of the 30 second work period with the dumbbell clean and press. This is probably one of my favorite exercises. You're using just a ton of shoulder muscles here. So the clean part, so from the floor up to your shoulder, we're using a lot of posterior shoulder. We're using a little bit of lateral shoulder with it. We're using a lot of the muscles that even stabilize and act on your shoulder blade and your scapula as well. And then for the uh, last part of it, just a ton of anterior delt. I kind of mentioned in the intro, the best way, well, it's been proven via scientific research that the best way to work that anterior shoulder is with a press motion either with a barbell or with a dumbbell barbells are great but i know a lot of you don't have them at home and so for that reason we're going to do the uh, dumbbell press i do like the unilateral motion on this uh, meaning using just one dumbbell just because it adds a degree of stability to your core your core your core has to work a little harder to stabilize that offsetting weight or that weight that wants to throw you off balance and so we need to work the core a little bit harder, keep the core a little bit tighter, 
while doing it just one side and then the other. Here we go, you guys, set three of that high interval, take it down from the ground up to shoulder height, and then we're going to go ahead and finish that press all the way up and overhead. Shoulder workout, here we go, you guys, you got it. You got eight seconds left on this, your third set. We're gonna be doing four sets of each of these exercises. You do get a 30 second break in between. Nice job, everybody. So there's set number three. Let's follow that up with 30 seconds on a boxer shuffle for our low interval, and then we'll come back with one more set. All right, here we go, last set, we got this, you guys. And so starting down at the ground, we're gonna use a ton of the posterior and lateral shoulder, as well as those, as well as those scapular stabilizers to pull the dumbbell up to shoulder height, and then go ahead and finish it off with that anterior delt as we press up and overhead. This is your last set, you guys. I know that they're starting to wake up a little bit. I know you're probably starting to feel a burn by this point. Just a great total body exercise. I love starting my workouts with kind of these bigger compound movements that include a lot of different body areas. We're getting a ton of legs, we're getting quads, we're getting glutes, we're getting lower back with that one. Just a great way to kind of wake everything up. I am taking a break too early and I'm gonna realize that in about three, two, one. There we go, we should be we should be shuffling. That's my bad team. And so um, low interval, you guys, boxer shuffle. Let's, let's hit it hard, let's keep going for eight more seconds, and then we're gonna get our first 30 second break. Just like that. There you go, Jared, nice job. Okay, now we can take our break. And so you get 30 seconds to catch your breath for a little bit. Next exercise coming up, we're gonna do, I call these some lateral raise and holds. Basically, a little bit more aggressive way that you can perform the lateral dumbbell raise exercise. This one, our target is that lateral deltoid muscle. Best way to work the lateral deltoid muscle is with any lateral raise out to your side. That can be done with either dumbbells or cables. I like to add this hold component. Let's walk you through it. Bring both dumbbells up, and then I'm holding my left arm out straight while I perform one, two, and three raises on the right. Hold the right out straight, well, I'm gonna perform one, two, and three raises on the left. So obviously I've got my lighter dumbbells for this because this one is gonna start to burn by the end of the four minutes. But I know you guys can do it. Stay strong, stay with me, and we'll get through it together. Three lateral raises on each side with the one isometric contraction while the other one is just being held statically in place. Nice job, everybody. Okay, so for this low interval, I opted to just go with some high knees. Um, you'll see that I'm taking a little bit slower pace with it. You could do like full on like running high knees where those knees are driving up um, fast and hard. But by the end of this, like you know, it, 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 I, I felt like this served the purpose that I needed it to. Let's just put it that way. This was enough just to kind of keep my body moving and my, my heart rate higher while I was doing the exercise. Okay, here we go, set two, you guys. And so core is nice and tight, back is nice and engaged, torso is nice and upright. Um, one of the biggest problems that I encounter with this is that people will kind of let their shoulders drift up towards their ears. Try to keep your shoulders out of your ears. I want your shoulder blades down. Make sure that motion is coming from the deltoid, not from the trapezius muscle as you're going through it, just like that. Nice job, you guys. Two sets down, 30 second break. Let's get back into more of those high knee touches and then we'll come at it for our third set. Here we go, third set. Uh, one of the things that I love about this exercise as opposed to just kind of a straight lateral raise is that isometric hold up at the top. So I'm a big nerd, you guys, biomechanics and physics. Given the force curve on a dumbbell, 
The hardest part of this exercise is that top part where that, sh that arm is out straight perpendicular from your side. That's when you've got the most gravity acting on it. That's when the, the weight is, I mean, theoretically the hardest just because the lever arm is the longest. Anyway, we are maximizing that force curve on those dumbbells by holding it out there isometrically. I'm sure you guys feel that. Um, with, a lot of times with the, with the lateral raise, I'll see people who just kind of go in and just, you know, just do the reps more or less on autopilot, kind of mechanically, um, not really realizing that <clears throat> the longer you hold in that perpendicular position, the more effective the exercise becomes. Uh, really, when those weights are down at your side, up until they get about 30 degrees away from your body, there's not a ton of resistance acting on them. That's one of the reasons why I'll use cables for kind of that lower end of the range of motion, but these dumbbells work great for the higher end of the motion if you can just stay in that higher, that higher range of motion. So there you go, you guys. Cool, you guys are doing awesome, looking good, looking strong. I know you're burning right now. I know that this one definitely lights me up every time I perform it, especially with this kind of hard and fast interval format like this, where we're doing lots of work in not a lot of time without a lot of rest. Makes it a little more difficult, but makes it oh so worth it. Okay, you guys, and then we're just going to get into the alternating marches. 30 seconds on this. This is your low interval. Again, this is just my effort to keep my heart rate up a little bit higher rather than take like a full, full on kind of rest period where I'm not doing anything. I found that my heart rate stays higher if I can just keep it up and if I could just do it like this. Nice job, everybody. So there's your 30 second low interval. And that is exercise number two. Everybody looking good, looking strong. Take your 30 second rest. Grab your drink of water if you need it, and then let's come back and let's hit it with some posterior deltoid dumbbell rows. One of my favorite exercises, um, well, so my favorite exercise for the posterior deltoid is gonna be like a reverse fly motion. Um, EMG studies have shown that that activates that posterior delt probably the best of anything. However, if you don't have that fly machine, this is a great option, these posterior delt dumbbell rows. Grab your weight, this is my heavier weight again, and now we're just gonna, uh, I'm leaning over, I'm bending forward on the bench, and we're gonna pull that weight up and kind of into your chest. The key here, you know, a lot of people will say, wait, Jared, that's a back exercise. If you keep your elbow in tight to your side, you're right, you're working a ton of lats and you're working a ton of rhomboids with that. However, I'm letting my elbow drift way out to the side. You can't see it from this camera angle, but I'll show it to you on my next set. There's 30 seconds on my left, and now we're just gonna jump right in to 30 seconds on the right. So you can kind of see there that my elbow is drifting out to my side. My, my elbow and my upper arm is actually perpendicular to my body on this, and so I'm pulling that elbow way far away from my body. What that does is that's just gonna emphasize a lot more of that posterior deltoid muscle while minimizing the contribution from your lats and from your rhomboids. And so there's 30 seconds there. Let's shift back to the left arm. I'll shift up my view a little bit. This is what it looks like. There you go. So you can see that the motion is me pulling my elbow out and away from my body. And then we're gonna pause just a little bit up at the top and then we're gonna really try to cons um, control that descent back down to that starting position. So that eccentric motion is nice and slow and in control. Now you'll notice on this that I'm not doing necessarily any low intervals. So uh, three, two, one on the left side. Now let's jump back onto the right side, hit your 30 second set. Um, the theory behind that, so while I'm working my left, so while I'm doing these just, you know, unilateral rows, while I'm working that left posterior deltoid, the right is getting a 30 second break and then vice versa. As soon as I grab that weight in my right hand and do 30 seconds of the rows, my left hand, my left arm or my left posterior delt is taking a break during that period. And so this is a great way where you can really just maximize your time, keeps your heart rate super high. Um, helps you to just, like I said, shred your way through a ton of work in not a lot of time. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this one. I believe this is set three on my left, and then I'm gonna jump into set three on my right. You guys are doing great. I know that you're burning right now. So between these first three exercises, we've hit every major head of that deltoid muscle. We did the alternating dumbbell clean and press for the front. We did those lateral raise and holds for the, the lateral side or for the middle. And now we're hitting this posterior dumbbell row, the posterior delt for the dumbbell row. This is um, 
exercise number three. We just got two left after this, you guys. You're doing an awesome job. We're almost 12 minutes into the workout. You guys, we're coming hard. We're coming fast. Great exercise, great workout. Looking good. All right, you guys, only one more. Let's hit it. Posterior delt, dumbbell, dumbbell rows over here on the left side. Nice, even pull. Pull all the way up. Again, the focus is on that posterior delt or the back of the shoulder. That's where I really want you to try to focus on. Create that mind-muscle connection. Uh, connect your mind to that muscle that's working or the muscle that you're trying to emphasize while you're doing this motion, that posterior delt. Nice job, everybody. There's 30 seconds. That was your last 30-second interval on the left. Let's hit that last 30-second interval on the right. Um, as you're bending forward and as you're doing this, you can do it on a, a table. You can do it on a couch. You can do it on a chair. There's a lot of different ways that you can definitely make this one work for you. I've got that heavier dumbbell. Um, this it should be your heavier dumbbell. This motion, there is there is a lot of contribution from your back, although we are trying to emphasize that posterior delt, making the heavier dumbbell the ideal option for this. Heavier, like, so I have a, a heavier set and a lighter set. Recommended, but certainly not necessary. All right, so here is your 30 second rest period. And now, oh, you guys, this is where things get real. Uh, we're gonna do some dumbbell thrusters after this. And so rest up, try to take some time, catch your breath, get a drink if you need to, and then let's get into these dumbbell thrusters. So we're gonna bring two dumbbells up to shoulder height. We're gonna drop down into a squat, explode out of the squat, and raise the dumbbells up and overhead. Looks just like that. Feet are about shoulder width apart. Make sure you sit down and back with your butt. Make sure you push from your hips. That means I need you to keep your lower back straight while you're doing this thruster motion. And then the dumbbells go right up and overhead. Getting into a lot of those anterior delts again, but we have to work the uh, stabilizers. The shoulder stabilizers have to work hard to maintain those weights in that position at your shoulder height during that thruster motion, during the squat motion. Okay, nice job, everybody. Let's see, we're gonna get into some curtsy lunge with a row for my low interval. And so we're just gonna drop down into a curtsy lunge. One leg goes behind you and to the outside of the other leg. And then you're just gonna pull with your shoulders. You're gonna pull your elbows back behind your back. You're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades together. That's what the curtsy lunge and row looks like. Now let's jump into set number two with the dumbbell thrusters. I'll give you a little bit more of a lateral view on what this one looks like. So again, dropping down into a squat, feet stay flat on the floor, drive through your heels. That's where the motion kind of, that's where your pressure is on the ground. And then you're gonna squeeze your butt as you come into that upright posture, upright position. And we're gonna finish it off with that overhead thrust, with that overhead push of the dumbbells. Nice job, everybody. I know you're burning. I know that I certainly was by this point. You've got three seconds left. Get in one or two more reps. Three, two, one. Nice job, everybody. Two sets down. Take a 30 second low interval and come back for more. And here we go, set number three on our dumbbell thrusters. Just a great total body motion. We're getting in a ton of squats. We're getting a lot of quad and hip activation. Core is going crazy on this. You're definitely using those lower back stabilizer muscles if you're doing this right. Again, try not to let the try not to let your torso round forward. Body or your lower body and your back has to stay nice and tight, nice and contracted during the thruster motion. You guys, come on, get it. Do better than I did. I know that I started burning by this point. It was all I could do to get that last rep in. Don't judge me on the last set. It looks even worse than that one. But you guys, you know what? We're going to make it through. Here we go. This is, again, exercise number four. Four out of five in our total shoulder at-home hit workout with just a pair of dumbbells, you guys. Such a great workout. Such a great way to just kind of get in a ton of work in not a lot of time. It doesn't take a long time. It doesn't take a long time, and it doesn't take a gym membership to make the kind of gains, to make the kind of progress that you are after. Here we go, last 30 second interval, you guys. I'll turn lateral for you again. Butt sits down and back. 
um, explode up out of that low squat position and push those dumbbells up and overhead. You guys, I know you're burning by this point. I know that I certainly was. You've only got 14 seconds left. You can do it, stay strong. Anterior shoulder, anterior delt is where we're going with this. That's where you should be feeling that. Three, two, one. Oh God, did that last rep count? Leave me a comment down below. I don't think it did. I owe you guys one more rep. So anyway, you guys, there you go. So that is uh, that is our fourth exercise. That's our dumbbell thrusters. We'll finish up with the low interval here. That's about as low as I could get into a curtsy lunge and row by this point. We are gonna muscle our way through one more exercise. So we've got about 10 more seconds on the low interval, take a 30 second break, and then come back for one more exercise. Right, here we go last exercise is a dumbbell w sometimes i refer to this one as a dumbbell face pull this is my rehabilitative exercise or this is my rotator cuff my shoulder stabilizer exercise you guys are going to love this one hinge forward at your hips and then you're going to pull those weights up into a w motion so the weights start kind of dangling down and in front of you slight bend in your elbows and then you're actually gonna pull up and back behind you so that your arms come up into this W motion. Again, I'm hinged forward at my hips about 30 degrees. So I'm feeling this a lot in the back of my shoulders, but then it's that rotation motion that's taking the weights from that low position to that high position, kind of that W position with my elbows bent that's really gonna kick on those external rotators specifically just a great way to light up that rotator cuff. I mentioned to you in the introduction to this video, a lot of people spend a lot of time on the on the kind of get big, look good muscles. So, so the delts and the traps and the buys and the tries. But if you do all that upper body work and neglect that rotator cuff, that's gonna be the first place that you break down. That's a lot of times what causes a lot of the pain and other symptoms that you might be experiencing. So it's crucial that we keep that rotator cuff strong. Here we go, th second 30 second interval. Um, I, this is a little bit better view. You can see that I'm actually hinged forward. Um, the important motion here, I want you to pull with your shoulder blades. So I want you to kind of pull your shoulder blades actually down. So kind of tuck your, I tell people, tuck your shoulder blades into your back pockets. Pull your shoulder blades down and back, and then let that motion with the weights and with the arms revolve around that. We're taking that, that motion through, again, a external rotation motion. And so I'm finishing with my thumbs actually up high towards the ceiling. That's where we get the rotation. And here we go, you guys, second 30 second interval. Um, I elected to go with some marching with some alternating arm reaches here. And so as your left knee marches up, the right arm reaches up and over your head and then vice versa, right knee, left arm up and overhead. That is your 30 second low interval, keeping the blood going. You guys looking good, looking nice and strong. We've done two sets. We are halfway done with our last exercise. Here's set number three. The emphasis here, the goal is that I want you to feel this in the, in the back of your shoulder. You're gonna feel this so that rotator cuff sits right underneath your posterior delt. And so if you feel it in that area, then you're doing the exercise correctly. You guys, you got 10 seconds left. This is your third set. We're just rocking our way through this. I know that you're burning right now. I know that you're on fire, but I know that you got it in you to finish it up nice and strong. Let's do it, everybody. Take 30 seconds and come back for one more set. everybody here we go last set of dumbbell w's also sometimes i talk to, i refer to them as dumbbell face pulls hinge forward at the hips arms are in front of you and then we're just going to pull those arms up and back behind you shoulder blades need to be in the right position to do that tuck your shoulder blades down and back and then let your arm kind of rotate around the rest of that motion you're feeling this that rotator cuff those external rotators uh, nice and nice and controlled on the way up and then nice and controlled on the way down that concentric and eccentric motion will really help to strengthen and stabilize those rotator cuff muscles. Looking good, you guys. Three, two, one, and you did it. That's the last high interval. 
We've just got 30 seconds left on our low interval. We'll do those alternating marches with the arm reaches and then we'll call it a workout. You guys did a fantastic job. This was a 22 minute shoulder workout that you can do right at home. We hit all three heads of the delt and then we did some rotator cuff stuff as well. So not included with this workout is going to be a cool down at the end. That's something that I strongly advocate. Just don't sit around now after this. Keep moving, keep mobile, keep walking around. And uh, you know, even some, some gentle stretching to your upper body is gonna be really good for it. Those are the things that you need to do. Hey you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more from Tone and Titan, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on your bell notifications. You can do that at the red box down in the corner of the screen, or you can hit this circle that's up on your screen right now. If you're interested in more shoulder videos, specifically shoulder rehab videos, I'm gonna put two more up on the screen right now. Make sure you click on those and check them out. Thanks, for much. Thanks so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time.